Now presenting Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment Yeah, not just presenting Eric's channel, I mean the Hour of Enlightenment I love you Eric But also we have an awesome guest here Kevin James Briggs, who I did a session with on YouTube, and it got an amazing response. Uh, but before I forget, we have Raylene, also our awesome medium, who will channel um, answers from Eric, uh, if you have any, from listeners. And uh, But anyway, here we go. Kevin James Briggs, uh, Briggs is an awesome guy. I love his demeanor. He is so sweet and gentle, and I just I fell for his accent, okay? I, I I had this thing about accents. But anyway, he is an author and specializes in consciousness and the connection to ETs and UFOs. He published a great book called Spiritual Consciousness, A Personal Journey. And he covers 50, 60 years. Oh, my God. You don't even look that old, dude, okay? <laughs> of his experience of ET contact and UFO connection. So, Kevin, he's a great speaker. I know that because I've been witness to that and uh, he has been presenting to a lot of groups of ufo and et enthusiasts and there are a whole bunch of them okay people anyway so um he published a book his published book was also mentioned in psychic news in the uk in their editor's good read section he's written also an article about his et experiences which is published in the new observations magazine i mean i i can go on and on but the dude is full of amazing experiences and you know what i'm telling you the guy has courage not too many people would be able to do what he has done this this untraveled territory like he's on the bleeding edge me, I'm like, I go to bed, and it's like, oh, my God, I can't stand the thought of a little small gray waking up, and there he is at my bedside. But no, this dude, he's got it going on. So without further ado, Kevin, James, Briggs, thank you so much for being part of our show. I just feel so honored, and you have so much to share. Well, thank you, Elisa, for that introduction. That's uh, uh, very flattering there. I do appreciate that. I do enjoy Isn't talking about my book. That accent, that accent, no, I can't, oh, I can't. <laughs> but anyway, I will shut up yeah. about the accent. Go for it. I, I, yeah, but I haven't lost my accent. I've been here for 19 years now, nearly 20. Yeah. Uh, but I've retained my good. accent. But uh, good. most people seem to like it, so it's quite good. So uh, it might be an asset good. to me now. I'm talking about the book and uh, appearing on the show. So thank you all for inviting me on your show. I do appreciate it. I do have a message to get out there. And uh, I couldn't yeah. do it without your assistance, so thank you. You bet. So educate us. Tell us. You I'll have the mic. You. Well, my my contact started, I was actually three years old, and uh, my mother engaged a photographer to uh, take a, a photograph for the family album. The photographer arrived. I was duly washed, had my hair combed, and I was uh, placed on the uh, dining room table uh, for uh, an elevated position. And not only was I off the ground from the elevator position, as I looked round the room, I realised that I was conscious, and I was conscious again in a physical body. And that was my first encounter. I remember telling my story about that to my wife many years ago, and she said that three-year-olds don't use words like consciousness, and they don't understand it. Well, as a, th- oh, as yeah. a three-year-old, I did. So that was quite an amazing wow. start to my journey. Yes. And then the next part, I was a few years later then, I was uh, eight years old, and I was having a weekly bath then. Uh, I don't know how hygienic that was, but that's what we used to do in those <laughs> days. The rest of the time, we were sponged down with soap and water. I was taking the weekly bath, and I felt a drop in temperature in the room, and I felt a, a vibrational frequency, which wasn't unusual for me. I was always attuned to the different vibrations surrounding where I was. Mm. And then two beings appeared to the right-hand side of me. They were slightly elevated off the floor. Both were very attractive, long blonde shoulder-length hair, both of them, a tight-fitting blue jumpsuit-type garment, and they had deep blue eyes. Uh, I was terrified. Mm. 
absolutely terrified. Oh. And they were spe- speaking to one another telepathically. And I could understand mm. it as a eight-year-old boy. And I remember some of the conversation to this day. The uh, female said, uh, is this the boy? And the male said, yes, this is the boy. And then she said, are you sure this is a boy? She said, yes, I'm sure this is a boy. And then she mm. said, well, look at him. He's small. He's uneducated. And he's frightened by our present. And I was. I was terrified. She was correcting that. Oh. And he said, no, this is a boy. I will guide him. I will teach him. There was some other conversation in that. Uh, and then they left. And that was my first encounter with Art and D. I now know who they are. And I've had a lifelong contact. With these two beings, um, they tell me they are uh, fifth dimensional beings. They tell me they mm. are Arcturian. And they tell me uh, that uh, they just live at a higher vibrational frequency. And they also informed me that uh, I was part of their extended family. On it, I live here in the third dimension, and they live in the fifth dimension. So that was my first wow. encounter with Orton D. And then I was so frightened. I dare not get out of the bath. Uh, I was shivering, the water went cold. My mother came in to see why I was still in the bathtub, and I told her about the two beings, and she said uh, it was just my imagination. She duly dried me. I got out of the bath, and we went on in the evening. But that, as I say, was the start of my contact with Orton D, and I've now been in contact with them for 56 years, and they've introduced me to others as well. So, uh, But the... The uh, first part started, as I say, at eight years old. That's amazing. So what is the most profound moment you had in your relationship with them or going in, seeing a, 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 a you know, mothership, anything? What was the most okay, profound okay. Well, turning well, point? Probably if I, if I explain the next uh, contact I had from them, I was at home one Sunday. I was nine years old, just a year later, and uh, mm-hmm. had some friends around playing. The friends left, and I truly saw them out the back door. And then uh, I turned to go back into the home, and I could feel the change in the vibrational frequency in the mm-hmm. home. And I, I understood yeah. there that there was someone else in the house. So I went upstairs to see if I could see who it was, went back down into the kitchen, into the living room again. And then I felt the energy, the strongest bit, uh, by the window in the in the living room. I went up to the drapes and looked behind the drapes, and in the top corner by the ceiling, there was a uh, orange orb. It was uh, yellow, orange in color, slightly vibrating, about four to six inches across. Uh, I was a bit perturbed uh-huh. by it. I wasn't particularly frightened, uh, but uh, it, there was no communication, but it just stayed there, just hovering, as it were. So uh, I ignored it initially, and then thought well, it'll probably disappear later on. Uh, I didn't tell anybody at that time because I didn't want my mother to think that I had invited it into the house. Anyway, it was still oh, there yeah. the following morning when I got up, and it stayed a whole week, a whole week. And it, when I came home from school on the Friday at 4 p.m., I opened the back door, and I knew that it had left. Now, uh, mm. at the time, I didn't know who it was or what it was. I do now. That was art, and that was his uh, pure conscious energy. It was his pure conscious mm. energy of. I say we didn't have any direct communication that I was aware of, but uh, instantly after he'd left, my psychic abilities were enhanced no end to where I could, wow. I was able to separate my consciousness from my physical and go and travel separately from my body uh, and uh, travel anywhere I wanted. But I didn't go very so far. Much, so he downloaded this this skill to you, in, in other words, like like it like may on. Well have done. Um, Oh, yeah, it seems like it, like uh, that Keanu Reeves, whatever, I can't remember. But uh, when he was downloaded, like, you know, martial arts stuff, that's great. Right, okay. I well, I mean, they have given thing. me downloads later on in life, but that may well have been a download. I don't, I don't know, really, but uh, I use the out-of-body travel to go and visit my grandparents, usually after a weekend on a Sunday. They live 70 miles away, and I would just relax, mm. open my mind, and travel over there just using my pure conscious energy. I would usually sit upstairs. Uh, they had a dressing room off the master bedroom, and uh, I would just watch them. The floor would be opaque. On a Sunday, my grandmother would usually be uh, cooking in the kitchen, and my grandfather would be either sat watching the TV or reading the newspaper. And it gave me 
gave me great pleasure to see them and comfort to see them. Mm. And I did that as a child for many, many years, many years. So uh, that was a, I didn't, at that time, I didn't travel any further. I was just happy using uh, the ability to uh, go and see my grandparents. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, you know, can we do this? I mean, what do you recommend to us? Or you know, what does Alton D recommend to us if we want to do something like this? Be able to astral travel, be able to download information, be able to connect with ETs, uh, et cetera, or should we? I don't know. Yes, well, I think, yes. I'm, I'm sure we should, yes. The, uh, um, they are here. They do listen to our conversations. Uh, and if you ask them, they will show themselves. And uh, and if you ask for help and assistance, uh, they will do. Um, I know when I got to about um, ooh, probably 17, 18-ish, uh, I couldn't find anybody else that was able to travel outside the body. And I asked my friends and family in the third party, saying I've got a friend of mine that travels outside of his body and uh, oh, yeah. um, do you know anybody else that can do this? And they all said no. So I remember on this particular occasion, I thought I would ask Art uh, for some more information. So I went to bed that evening. I relaxed. I opened my mind and I actually held my hand out and said, Art, I know there's much more to this. There's a lot more information. Can you come and share that mm. with me? And he came. He took hold of my hand. Uh, I left my body. I looked down. I could see my body fast asleep. And then uh, we left out through the window. So we were three stories up, and we flew around the subdivision and then came back into the window. I looked down. I could see my body asleep. And then uh, I went back into my body. I woke up the following morning thinking that was cool, but I wasn't certain whether it was a dream or, or not. So the following evening, I decided to do it again. I went to bed. I relaxed. I opened my mind. I held my hand out again and asked Art to come and show me some more. He came, he took hold mm. of my hand, I left my body, I looked down, I was asleep, and we went out through the window again. Uh, this time, we flew down into the Leeds City Centre, where I saw the town hall, the hospital, the university where I worked at the time, and some other buildings that I recognised. We flew back to my mm -hmm. apartment, in through the window, and uh, I could see my body asleep, and I went back into my body. So that was the second evening. When I woke up the following morning, I'm still not fully convinced whether I'm sleepwalking, dreaming. So I thought I'll try it again for a third time. So uh, I did exactly the same process. Art came, he took hold of my hand. But this time I asked him, I said, uh, I'm still not certain whether I'm dreaming or sleepwalking. And I'm concerned about going out the window because we're three stories yeah. up and it's concrete pavement below. So I said, can we go out through the roof? So we went out through the roof and then we continued to travel that way uh, each time after that uh, so mm. uh, um, those are my first uh, recollections of out of body travel with art himself i was used to doing it on my own but to do it with someone else was quite uh, quite amazing really did he take you to places farther from your hometown yes I mean, did he, he take um, you to like an alien ship or another planet or whatever another okay, realm well, he took, uh, he, I've traveled all over with him, but uh, I can give you an example of one thing. He came to me one evening and said, Kevin, I'm going to take you somewhere special tonight. Are you prepared to come with me? And I said, yes, I'll go anywhere you want to go. So again, I relaxed, opened my mind, he took all of my hand, and we left through the roof. But we continued to go up and up and up and up. Mm. And I could see the earth getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it just became a very faint blue dot. And then we took what I describe as a right turn, but I believe, I believe we went into a higher dimension. And uh, as we wow. entered that dimension, there was a line of 30 people. And stood in front of that line was my deceased father. I'd never seen him standing before because he was always in a wheelchair from when I was born. So he greeted yeah. me. And there was a tremendous amount of uh, love emanating from this group. And my father mm. greeted me. I said, Kevin, I'm going to introduce you to your family members, 30 of them going back over 300 years. So I do oh started gosh. being introduced to them, going down the line, and the first 15 had uh, a physical appearance. And we chatted and interacted as you would in the third dimension. When I got to the mm. halfway down the line, the second 15 were pure conscious energy orbs. 
four to six inches why is across that? slightly. Why is that? I um, yeah. I think that was just the the first fifteen was showing me their physical and the uh, second 15 were just showing me their conscious energy, but they were able to show me their last incarnation. So they showed me Ooh. an incarnation. Uh, so uh, again, I went down the line, introduced to them all, and the feeling of love was just absolutely tremendous, absolutely tremendous. Mm. And uh, mm. I continued to travel uh, and meet them on a regular basis with art, and then I got so comfortable, I would do that on my own. And I did that for a couple of years. And then I decided wow. um, it, was, it was getting more and more difficult to get back. And they were wanting me to stay all the time. And I said, no, I can't stay. Yeah. I've got my physical. I'm enjoying it. Um, so um, and I decided one day at work I would go back and see them for the last time. So I did a mm. usual routine. I relaxed, opened my mind. I went to see them. And I told them, bearing in mind, I've been visiting regular over a two-year period. I told them that this will be my last visit, and uh, I will see them next time when my physical expires. And uh, and yes. I've never been back since. They tried to persuade me to stay, but I uh, I uh, uh, chose to go back and, and continue my life in the physical because I was enjoying it. And uh, um, so that was on one occasion where he took me somewhere special, yes. Mm. Okay, so did you ever share this with your peers, except for the third person thing, like I got this friend who? No, no. Uh, initially, obviously, I tried to find the other people, and I was unable to. So then I didn't. I, yeah. I told my brother about it. He he understood it. He doesn't have any of the same abilities. Uh, and then when I met my wife, who's still my wife today, I thought I'd better share this information with her. That you know, we there's another side to us, the spiritual side, uh, and mm. uh, I explained, explained Ooh, how that did that to go? her. Ooh. Well, it went quite, it went quite well actually. I was surprised. Mm. She said, "Well, if you see any spirits, so uh, I want to see them too. So let me know." And uh, so Sandy mm. is aware, and uh, she has had some contact with. Uh, there's one of the beings that uh, his name is Zark. He's a small grey. He's an actual. He's a mathematician. Oh, he's a. And well, they, uh, he designs. Pardon? Aren't small greys supposed to be mean? Oh, no, 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 I know, no, no. I mean, there are some uh, bad small greys, but Zach, no, he has a sense of humor. Oh, okay. He moves, he like, moves my it's wife's like human beings, like, you know, different people around yeah, the home. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, she'll do a play setting, she'll turn around to walk back in the kitchen, and he moves the knife and forks off the play setting, and... Sometimes she'll go and oh uh, cl close the blinds. She turns around and he's opened them again. And then on one occasion, he moved all her shoes. She has a, a large walk-in closet and the shoes are left where she takes them off. And uh, she called me in one day and said, Kevin, Kevin, have you been in my closet? I said, no, why? <laughs> so I went to have a look and all the shoes had been lined up on the baseboard, uh, right, neat and tidy. And I asked that, Zach, did he move them physically? And he said, no, he, he moved the atoms in space-time dimension. I thought it was an amazing new plan. Wow. Uh, but, uh, um, yeah, so um, so my wife is aware that they are here um, because of that contact and has shown a, a craft, which she got a photograph of, which was quite interesting. Um, I was actually trying to connect with a group of ATTs that I speak to regularly, and uh, I was unable yeah. to contact them. But I was able to contact a small craft that had five or six greys in it traveling past. Oh. And the guy that was piloting the craft, his name is Tia. And I've met Tia before. So after pleasantries, mm. I asked why he was in the area. And he said, well, we were flying close by and we wanted to come and see where you lived. So uh, we just come to say hello. So I had a quick, brief, brief conversation Ooh, wow. with him. Wow, funny. And then, and then the, they said, by. we'll have to go now because we're off. <laughs> We're off our designated course. So they, they left. Nothing unusual for me, quite normal for me. But then when oh uh, I came out to the uh, back porch by our pool, we normally sit there and have a coffee in the morning and a cup of tea. And Sandy said to me, Kevin, you missed the most beautiful rainbow this morning. I said, oh, did you get a photograph? She said, yes. We have five acres at the back. And the rainbow went from one fence all the way across our property to the other mm. fence. So, so then she said, uh, you're not going to believe what happened next. I said, no, what happened next? She said, oh, a craft appeared under the rainbow. It was a metallic dish shape, 
And I said, did you get a photograph of that? She said, yes, I did. That was just fascinating. But the interesting point was, when I looked at the mm. time on the photograph, it was 8.30 a.m. It was 8.30 a.m. when I was speaking to Tia, who was piloting that Ooh. craft. So what they did wow. there, they gave us confirmation, one for myself in relation to my uh, communication with uh, Tia, and then one for Sandy uh, in relation to showing her craft, extending her knowledge of them that they are here, they do wow. travel around, and if they want to decloak, they can do. And she got the photograph. So uh, the photograph is a little blurred of the craft. I suspect it appeared for that split second just so she could take the photograph, and then it was moving right. off at speed. But it is a beautiful photograph, yeah, so. Um, That's amazing. Uh, quite, quite I mean, I remember uh, I, I went out to Indy Bronzeville with um, three of my friends, my girlfriends, and um, they, they are big believers in ETs and a lot of stuff, and I didn't know what was going on. But so um, they said, let's go into this field, and we got a blanket, and we all laid down on the blanket. It was at night. And we said, let's get a UFO to appear. And so we said, okay, come on, come on, bring it on. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, we saw this bright light that was mm -hmm. moving weirdly. I mean, it was not like it, it was slow. It was not like a, you know an air a airplane or jet or anything yeah. like that. And it's, it, it had some a number of lights that did not make sense. And then all of a sudden, it. <laughs> goes to the left and disappears like at you know so it was clearly not a the usual it's aircraft clearly a craft, yeah. Yeah. yes yeah, well, so, if you, so what do they, you recommend do that. What if do you ask do? them they will show you a craft yes yeah so what do you recommend to the regular us regular folks should we <laughs> try to get a relationship with these aliens um you know should, should well yes, what if should you're we comfortable do? with doing that yes if you're comfortable with yeah. doing that you could do exactly what you did. You could lay out in your backyard on a blanket and look up at the stars on a clear night and ask them to show you a craft. And uh, but, they will do. As long as you're not fearful, uh, they will show you a craft, I'm sure. But uh, could you invite in... I mean, not all aliens are benevolent, right? So, oh, no, they're not. Uh, no, there are some bad uh, aliens, so yes, well... Um, like they're bad I, I don't know whether you, you would know, meet any bad ones just by asking them to show themselves. Um, there are more ben uh, benevolent ones, sorry, more um, ones that are very friendly than the benevolent ones. So how, we, how can we protect ourselves from inviting in the ones who are not benevolent? Right, okay then. Well, you, you have to, I always ask to, uh, for them, the, the good ETs, to protect me. Uh, and they say they oh. do do that. So if there's any... Uh, um, bad ETs about, then uh, uh, I'm protected by them. So, uh, um, But I think that's probably important. Nice. You would do that anyway if you were talking to the spirit world. You'd have to be careful who you invited in. Yeah. You'd have to have some means of protecting yourself from the from the dark side, from the uh, uh, entities that yeah. may want to do you harm. So, yes, it's very similar. That's right. Uh, but I haven't exactly. had any bad experiences at all, so I'm very fortunate. So you were able to reach these guys, these aliens... Are you able to channel uh, spirits also, like deceased loved ones? I haven't channeled deceased loved ones. I've uh, obviously met the uh, deceased loved ones going back over uh, the 300 year period. Uh, I've, I've, yeah. I've met with friends who have died. Uh, I've met with family members who have died. Uh, but I haven't channeled them, but I am able to channel uh, a group. Uh, of ETs, uh, or in particular, uh, a few years ago, I had some friends around, and we were doing a meditation, and after the meditation, uh, one of the uh, guests there said, do you feel anything, is anybody here? I said, no, not really. She said, she said are you sure? I said, well, there's a male stood next to me, I can feel his the vibrational frequency. She said, well, who is it? I said, I don't know. She said, well, ask him. So I asked him, and he spoke through me, and it was art. And I channeled oh. off for the first time. Oh I my God! We so then met like as a, a small group. Pardon? Wow. Was it, were you like trance channeling him? I, I don't know quite know the difference between. I know well, there are different were, ways were of channeling. Were you speaking for him? 
in other words? No, he was speaking through me. I moved I my consciousness it, to one side. Then he there, we got a trans channeling. Okay. Is that oh, okay? It. Okay. Okay. He was using your body, your vocal cords, etc., to right. communicate. That's pretty cool. He called it dual conscious physical communication. That's what he called wow. it. Wow. Uh, mm. And then we met once a month as a group, and I channeled art and some of the other ETs, and we uh, recorded it and uh, transcribed it. And some of those uh, transcriptions will be published in a book in May. I was asked to be a mm -hmm. contributor to a book, A Greater Reality, uh, which has been published in May. And uh, I did a chapter of 70 pages, and uh, it includes some of the uh, channeling uh, transcripts. Wow. So I want to ask Eric a question, my lovely boy who I love so much. Eric. says hello, hello, Mama. What? He says oh, hello, Kevin. Baby. Hello. And hello, lovely Raylene. So why hello, Kevin? Why Kevin in all this? So he can put education out there and inform other people he's a catalyst into bringing awareness to humanity all around the world. His book reaches a number of different types of cultures. He says that he's going to be moving forward and finding a new way of communicating with extraterrestrials through some type of, it's like hypnosis work, but almost like a trans channeling type of work at the same time. It's a hypnosis trans channel. He's cool. putting out information. So, so, so he is meant to like trans channel aliens to groups? No, not to groups. He's just putting out information out there to educate humanity about different groups and about different races that are out there. Okay, so why did they choose him? His higher soul is educated for it. It has an interest oh. for it. He has a contract that, um, what's the right word? Contract isn't even the word that fits for it. His higher soul has lived with other, other dimensions, other frequencies versus humans. And so he's connected mm. to more extraterrestrial. He's that, he has a different type of energy. You can say more of a higher or wiser energy. Oh, cool. So is, has, is he, does he have ET um, DNA? Uh, is, I mean, is there something there? Is he from another planet? Are you from another universe, Kevin? <laughs> Kidding. Not that I'm aware of. No, I was born yeah. here. I consider <laughs> myself to be human. Yeah. Eric says, first so, off, yeah. everybody has a little bit of ET DNA in them. Mm. Yeah, I bet. That's cool. And? <laughs> That's first off. What's second off? And, and he just goes, pause. <laughs> <laughs> so to answer your question, he says everybody does, not just him. He's talking about going beyond DNA and having your soul. Your soul connects to DNA, but your soul has a different type of DNA. But he says the word that you can use to understand it is there is DNA within the soul where you have a, you can say race, where you originate from or where mm -hmm. you come from. Okay. Interesting. Wow. So, Kevin, have you ever been on a UFO, I mean, on a ship? And can you, if so, uh, yes. can you describe it for us? I can do, yes. I was, um, for, when I was 14 years old, I had a paper round. And uh, when I left every morning to do the paper round, a UFO would appear above the house, and then a second UFO would appear and come from the opposite direction. They would join together, follow me around the paper round, and then uh, when I went back home, they would... Uh, separate and go the different ways. One would usually go straight up into space, and the other one either go back the way that it came or, or go the other way. So um, that was a regular thing, and I was always aware that there was other vibrational frequencies around me while I was doing the paper round. Uh, I'm sure they were following me all the time there. And on one occasion, I put up the courage to, to ask them to show themselves. I said, I know you're there. 
can you show yourselves? And uh, a couple mm. of uh, small greys appeared, and uh, I asked them what they wanted, and they said that there was a group of uh, people who would like to meet with me. And I said, well, I've uh, got to finish my paper round, I've nearly finished, uh, but then I've got to go to school, yeah. and I don't want to be late for school. First things first, and right, said, Kevin? First things first, <laughs> thing first. Alien, step aside, i got my paper round to do. <laughs> I know. That's so, hilarious. But, but that's how it happened. And uh, I yeah. I said, yeah, so I finished the paper round, and I went with them. And I went to a, a mothership, and I only know it was a mothership because it was the size of it. When we pulled into the hangar, uh, there was many more ships there, of all different shapes and sizes, and it was huge. And as we, mm. I disembarked from the craft, there was uh, uh, a small grey working on the, one of the craft, and he waved at me, and that was Tia, who I've spoken about earlier. And I say that's yes. the first time I encountered him, and he's, as I say, he's mm. a pilot and a technician, and he waved and smiled, and I smiled and waved back just to be polite. I was then led down into a large amphitheatre, and it was full of uh, all different species. And on the front uh, podium there, there were eight eight beings. Uh, I now know these uh, beings to be Ort, D, the first two I met in the bathroom, Arna, Zark, Ra, he's Anunnaki, he's the lead counsel of this group of eight, Tag, Chica, and Orla. And I was introduced to these eight, and I, at the time, thought I was just being paraded as a, a small human boy species for them to see for their entertainment. What I realized <laughs> later was that this group of eight were actually a galactic council, and uh, very similar wow. to our meetings, uh, like at the United Nations, where all the delegates sit about, and the uh, main delegates are on the front podium. And uh, as I say, I was introduced to them all. I was fine until I got to Chica, and he's a mantis-type being, and I was a little perturbed by that. But the others I was Ooh, happy with. Like a, like a and, praying uh, mantis? Like a praying mantis, yes. He's very Ooh. intelligent, um, very intelligent, very wise, very old. Uh, but he mm. doesn't have a sense of humor. I've met him since, and uh, a few years ago, I actually asked him if he was a, uh, a uh, entomologist. And he, <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't happy with that. He, 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 he gave me a nasty look. But, uh, so he doesn't have a sense just of humor. But, uh, uh, just don't slash don't. a little pin and, 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 and a cork board in front of him. Like, did, did, uh, how we... No, I don't remember yeah, that. No, no, they were, they were just all sat there in the order that I've told you, from left to right, and uh, as I say, I was just introduced to them. But, I mean, I know them all now, and I communicate with them uh, regularly. That's amazing. It took so much, and must take so much courage. I mean, how did you do that? How did you find the courage to to do what all of us would just, like it's, it's a horror movie to us? For some of us. Anyway. Well, uh, it just seems normal and natural to me. I don't have any fear of these uh, beings at all. It's just that they just live at a higher vibrational frequency. They're very similar to us. They have families. Uh, they have professions. Mm. And uh, they're no different to us other than um, they live at these higher vibrational frequencies. Um, but no. they're, they do, uh, they're asking me to, uh, what they're doing now, they want to meet with our United Nations. And uh, that's mm. what I'm working towards Ooh. now at the moment. Um, yeah. And hopefully we may be successful uh, sometime in the future. Well, so what does our government know? Do they know what you know? Oh, they know what I know. Yes, I've uh, spoken to the, uh, emailed the chairman of the Outer Space Affairs Committee in Vienna and given him all this information. I've also uh, uh, given the information to, uh, um, his name is Nicholas Hedman, and I've also given the information to uh, Dr. Dip Ippo in Washington at the Outer Space Affairs Committee. So they are aware of this. And I was contacted uh, a couple of weeks ago by another experiencer, and he's been uh, given similar information, and he's actually passed the same information. He emailed Dr. Dip Ippo in uh, Washington uh, with the same information about the uh, group of uh, eight and them wanting to meet with the United Nations. So it's now come from two sources, two experiencers, uh, mm. uh, myself, and, uh, and I won't mention the guy's name because he's putting the information yeah. out himself, and uh, I'm sharing it too. So there are actually two of us, and uh, he's a he retired uh, assistant attorney general. So he has quite a high position, or did have a high position before he retired. So uh, 
Uh, he probably yeah, has more well, influence you know, than I do. But yes, in answer to your question, mm -hmm. the United Nations do know, our governments do know, mm -hmm. uh, whether they're do going they know to and act believe. upon it. They, they, they not only know, but they believe. Is that what you're saying? Because I know there was the, Can the Canadian uh, defense minister has a big speech, and you can look at it on, U uh, on uh, YouTube, saying, yep, there are alien oh, yeah. people. Get your head out of your, you know what? And so many yes, that was, uh, yeah, Mr. Hellier from, uh, he's retired now, I think he's in his late 90s now, I think, Mr. Hellier. Ah, um, but okay. yes, he's uh, one, of the, one of the highest ranking government officials that does speak out about this. So, uh, mm. um, yeah, our governments do know they're here. You know, I'm sure they may even have their own contact with them. Uh, so yeah. we'll, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I just hope our government doesn't, doesn't mess, it, mess it up, okay? I don't know. But Eric, do you have anything else to to bring to this to to educate us uh, about uh, with with what Kevin's going through, what we're going through, our government's going through? What you got, boy? My love says, of my life. He says yes. He's talking about. He says you're the love of his life, and mm. now he's going back on track, getting back on track. He's talking about the mm -hmm. government wanting to protect. The people, because he says that not everybody is ready to handle this. Eric is talking about the vibration of everybody. We are naturally this 3D vibration. Some of mm. us that are evolving, going through spiritual awakenings, can reach that fourth dimension and also that fifth dimension, and it's because of their vibration. So he says the world wow. the people are not in a state of being okay with it and being able to match the frequencies because of the way that they communicate with one another and with other people. They have extraterrestrials, not only extraterrestrials, but interdimensional beings. They have the ability to communicate to you. Most people would think it's telepathic. It's directly mm. in your mind where you have this whole conversation put in instantaneously and not word by word. Interesting. And so he says All right. people are not ready for that type of communication and they will be. living agreement. Yeah, yes, they will be. Because we have to be. Yeah. All right, so without any further ado, are you, is Kevin and Eric, are you um, okay with taking questions from the group? Yes, I'm fine, yes. I can just answer one oh. thing that Eric said there in relation to yes. uh, telepathic communication. Yes, I, I, that's how they do uh, communicate with me, and very often they'll give me a download of information uh, within a split second. And uh, when that happens, I always ask for confirmation, either to show me a craft or I ask for something slightly mm. different, uh, and then they'll show me a craft or uh, to, to, for confirmation. You know? So, yes, Eric is correcting that in relation to... Uh, and I know of others that communicate in this way. I know this group of eight, the leader, Ra, he's contacted others. Uh, and I'm aware of several people now who are in direct contact with the same group, using the same methods and everything. So it's not just me. Wow. There's a whole uh, generation of people, so we say, who are communicating and contacting uh, with our ET oh. extended families with many modalities that's of contact amazing. that they use. So. Oh, that's amazing. Eric it's is talking about useful. the purpose. Sorry, Eric yeah. is talking about the purpose of the individuals that Kevin is working with. They, are, they have a concern about the earth. The earth is damaged. Mm. The water is their main concern. If our planet is damaged, other planets will also be affected. We have resources that are being used here. So this is the main reason why they want to meet with our people. The UN? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so Eric, uh, okay, sure. Eric, you're funny. <laughs> Yes, I say Eric is correct there. They told me they're very concerned about the pollution. They're particularly concerned mm. about Fukushima in Japan, and now the pollution oh, yeah. spreading into the Pacific Ocean. And they have technologies oh. that are able to uh, neutralize these uh, pollutions and the radioactive pollution. And they want to share these uh, technologies with us and assist us Good. in the transition from where we are now into 4 and 5D. Oh, Good. Yes. Okay, well, I will um, unmute our first caller, who is somebody from the 813 area code. Hi there, how are you doing? Welcome Hi, to the uh, show. My name is, 
Hi, hi, Elisa. Hi. Can you Debbie. hear me? How you doing? Well, yes, I can. You can hear us. Can Hello? you hear us? Oh, I can hear you. I'm hearing the. I'm hearing the uh, recording. This is uh, Lisa oh, Kenny. Okay. Um, how you doing? Doing good. Um, what you got I'm, for I'm us? Calling, I, I'm calling. I'm um, calling my our son, my husband, and I are listening, and my daughter and my other son, Justin and Sydney and Sean. Um, our son passed um, end of November. Um, he took his life. Mm-hmm. Um, I was hoping. Yeah, we're not. We're kind of hanging on by a thread, but um, we're hoping. We read Eric's book and. I was listening to all, I listened to all your recordings and uh, Kevin. Uh, he's amazing. All the stories um, that oh, he, we were listening yeah. to him, part one and part two. And uh, we're wondering if Kevin or Eric, um, anybody can help us to contact, get in co- touch with Connor. His name's yeah. Connor Kenny. Eric, he, yeah, Eric, have you met yeah. Connor? He's here. He has. Oh, he's okay. Helping him. So t- he's tell been, me, tell me, Eric, what have you Connor? done with Connor? Yeah. Because he's helping him to learn how to transition into spirit world. He's very connected to his human life. First off, Mm. he says, hello, Mom, this is coming directly from Connor. He's apologizing for his actions. He was not in the right state of mind when this happened. There was something else that was involved. He's not, he's taking credit for his actions, but he's saying that he was not in the right state of mind. Well, what, what, what do you mean? I mean, what was there, this other thing that happened? I mean, what else was involved? Some form of either substance or medication or something that altered his mind frame. His mind wasn't right. Okay. Was it mental illness? There was that, yes, but there's more beyond mental illness. He's saying there's more beyond okay, well, that. What, what, um, can I ask a, a question? Can I ask a question? Oh, yes, please. Yes. You should can be I the one asking question? the question. Yes. Um, he, he was having marriage difficulties, and he had a two-year-old daughter, um, mm. and she asked him to leave um, a couple of days before, and she wanted to separate. Um, I guess uh, we're trying to get from Connor... He he was with that girl, little baby, like forever, like every day, every day. He raised her. Well, mm-hmm. I can't talk, but um, my fear is that she told him that she wasn't going to let him see her, and she was going to withhold. She asked for a divorce, and we think she asked, um, you know, him to leave, and yeah. he wouldn't go see his daughter. That's why. That's my fear that maybe he. That's why yeah. he kind of over, you know, did that really. That act, Connor. So yeah. what what Connor that, tell us said that's not what caused what happened, Connor. That's that's not what caused him to go over the edge. He says it was everything the separation leaving, he was not mentally okay. He wasn't going to settle for what she was wanting. But it wasn't only her because he's not blaming her and he doesn't want he doesn't want her to take credit for his death. He says that's that's my fault. It's not her he really doesn't want her to take credit for it. It's him. No, he says no, that you're it's not right her. about what was what was said, but he's still not pointing fingers. What? Why couldn't? So what why was couldn't it? You, what, Go ahead. Why Betty. couldn't you call us? Why couldn't you connect with your family in Florida? He's in Texas. Yeah. Why didn't you connect with us, mm-hmm. Connor? Like what? He has his hands down. Help? He has his hands down folded, and he's really thinking. He says that he's sorry. He says there wasn't a state of him thinking. He wasn't in the state of thinking clearly. This is why he wasn't he wasn't there mentally. He was not uh, in the right think, state. Had he have been processing, he would have reached out. Because he had he had um, friends telling him that he could go and live with them, and they you know they could they would take him to stay there for a while until they worked it out and he he kept telling he told his brother his life was ruined his life was over he just said my life's over and that's why I'm asking if that's why like is it because of you know the the divorce maybe coming you know why would he say his life's over at 28 yeah okay let me ask you a question there's a lot more than yeah Eric and Connor (laughs) 
is this is there some past life thing going on here? Because I'm getting that. Uh, I'm probably I may be wrong, but it, it seems like there's something from another life, uh, or maybe it's a spiritual contract or whatever. But can you speak along those lines, so, Connor and Eric? Connor is not. He's not connected to that yet. He's actually. He seems like he's still very much alive. He's very new to being on the other side, and he hasn't connected to that. Uh, Eric oh, isn't yeah. answering the question. He, I don't think he's aware of that answer either. Connor is very so new. He's still wait. learning. Yeah. Give him a little bit more time to connect to that information. He's still very much saying his goodbyes. I don't know if you're familiar with the dimensions that we have, but he's still connected to the human dimension. Mm. So you're going to notice that he's around. He's still there. Can you ask him if okay he's... okay mentally. There's yeah, some I, type of medication. We, we think he... Well, we think he was... We're just figuring out because his brother's bipolar, so we're wondering if that was what was wrong. And, um, and he, his brother used to ask him to take, you know, go get checked, and he'd say no. He, he was very much against taking any medicine or anything or trying to get checked, but... Um, so that's where we're And he still we is know. against it. He's against the medication yeah. because it turns you into something you're not. In his mind, mm. that's where he was logically thinking. He wasn't processing where he's obviously at now. He still wouldn't have gone for medication, even if he would still be here. He says, yes, he does suffer from that mental illness. Mm. He wasn't yeah. accepting of it. He was aware of it, but not accepting of it, if that makes sense. There was medication. There's some form of medication that was connected to either his death or uh, was a catalyst into his brain, the mental illness. Do you think he got a um, hold of any kind of medication at all, Lisa? Um, he he would self-medicate. He would drink very heavily. Uh, not not that mm-hmm. night, but I mean, he drank very heavily and did and did marijuana because he was self. We think self-medicating. My husband yeah. wants to ask. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. That. Okay. Beyond um, alcohol and beyond marijuana, there's medication. Um, he, um, something that's going to relax the mind. It's not something that's like a upper. It's going to be something that relaxes you or is used for anxiety. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did they do a talk screen? Um, Beth, we, we don't have any. This is what's hard. She's in Texas and we're, it's been really hard dealing with this, but she told us the medical examiner report, she saw it. we trying to get a copy. We haven't seen it, but she's saying he, he had no drugs or alcohol in the system. But we don't know yeah, that for sure because no. we, we haven't seen the report, so we don't know. Yeah. Um, but he has a daughter. Like, why? I want to know, why would you leave your daughter? That's that's very upsetting to me. And, and I you know. know. You know, well, he, he was in a different state of mind. Yeah, state of mind. I think right now it's probably a bit too early. It looks like he's still attached to his humanist. So I think yeah. that's probably, yeah. uh, you know, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Eric, how, how long should they wait to call in again and find more information? Can, can Eric can Eric give more, can Eric tell us more? Does he seem to, yeah. like, have more insight? Can, does he have more insight into helping Connor? Yeah, I guess that's that that every yeah. spirit. He says like, every spirit has their own feed at healing and seeing what they did wrong. He says, it's not as easy as you think it is. He says, us as a spirit, we have to process what we've done, the pain that we've caused. He says, my healing experience looks different from his. He says, I don't have the magic answer for you because I'm not sure how long it's going to take him to heal as he's not. You have right. to... A, like I would say two months to give him time to get familiar with more of where he's at. And as he gets familiar, then he can learn to answer some of the questions that you have. Right now he's sitting down and he has his head down. He has his knees up and his arms are folded across him. He's really disappointed in himself, his actions, mm-hmm. the pain that he has inflicted on everybody around him. And he's talking about his daughter. He wasn't thinking. There was medication that was influencing his mind, substance. He was not in the right state. Had he have been the Connor that was in the right state of mind, he wouldn't have done that. 
Is there any yeah. any message he can give to his family that is validating before we close and go to the next uh, caller? Well, did did he is he messing with his his brother said his phone his phone music is coming turning on like hard heavy metal all of a sudden it's just blaring like at work and the lights are flashing and stuff. Is he messing with his brother or his sister or us at all? He says yes, or, and that's. That's the energy yeah. that you can tell that he's very much on this human plane with you. That's what he's yeah. talking about yeah. with him. Um, he's telling you guys, you guys to sh- be okay, and he says that he loves you. He says to talk to him because he hears you. Connor. He's trying to communicate through we, dreams. We all, everybody wants to say they love you. We all love you. It's hard to go on, though, without having you here. I, I know. I know. It's uh, so hard. I know. God. I do I'm know. So sorry, but, Lisa, honey. you and your family, just call back any show, okay? And um, we'll get you to this, all of you guys, okay? And, Connor, <laughs> yo, Eric, take care of that boy, okay? Teach yeah, him to communicate with his family. Up. Yeah, asking Eric to please yeah. teach him everything and keep him under his yeah. bed, please. <laughs> Not the bad stuff, okay? No. But just teach <laughs> him how to keep his family. Connor already knows. Connor knows all the uh, language already. <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. Heaven's never going to be the same with those two. Um, They'll be fine. Yeah. So, anyway, we'll check back with him, okay, Lisa? Okay. All right. And and thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we just want to let him know we love I'm so sorry you. for your loss. Yeah. Just let him know we love him. We love him. We're we're upset. Oh, he knows. We miss him, but we love him. No. Thank you. Because I know. I know. Thank you. Because he loves you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, oh gosh. All right. So, um, are you right. okay with that? Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. okay. I'm going to go on to the next for his heart okay, because okay. It, it's it's Thank very you. difficult because right. uh, it's the same. No. 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 Um, no. It's tough, but okay. So we have somebody from the seven hundred seven area code. Hi there, how are you? Hi. No. Hi. How are you? Welcome to the show. Is this Stacy? Yes. Hi. How are you? Hey. Sorry, I have my dogs in my car. <laughs> I always have dogs around me. I'm good. Can but, you hear uh, me? Yeah. What you got? Oh, what, what I don't would know. You like I'm to just end? calling in. Well, um, I lost my daughter um, a year and a half yeah. ago, and mm. um, she a was in a. Um, thank you. Um, she was in a plane crash, and um, one of the things that's been bothering me because it was so publicized, and um, you know, on the news, and you yeah. know, it, it's hard not to watch the stuff, you know, when it's out there, and um, and read the autopsies and everything. Uh, six. Beautiful oh, people gosh. lost their life that day, and they're all young entrepreneurs. She was 23, and um, one of the things that bothers me is I, I watch the footage because there's a, a road footage of her crash, and I sit there in my head and I count the oh. seconds, you know, and wonder what she was feeling at that time, you know, during that time, and that's been bothering she me was a lot. A beautiful, lately. she was a beautiful girl. She was a model, right? Yes, she was. She, can you, um, can you tell Eric her name? There and she was, her name was can Mariah Sunshine. Her? Yeah. <laughs> She's mm. here. Her, She's her name was through. Mariah Sunshine, and um, yeah. it's Myraya Sunshine is how we kind of, you know, got it. Oh. So she's there yeah. with Eric? She's, she's here, and she says that it's not important to remember my thought process during those last moments she was prepared for what what was going to happen however it was very sudden she tells you that she left her body very quickly there was I want to say like the snap of a finger she's showing instantly she was gone so no pain yeah she says that there was sound She's remembering sounds. She detached from the physical body and had uh, the best way to explain it is, you know, when you're in a a room and somebody else is in like three rooms away from you and you're hearing a person from that far room, 
she was hearing sounds like that at a distance from her, almost like things were amplified is how she explains it, but yeah. in a different room. Wow. wow. So yeah, no I've pain. been told that before. No, she didn't. She didn't go through pain. Thank God. Was there a reason for this to happen? Like a spiritual contract? So we haven't why? found out yet either. It's been so, you know, it's almost been two years into um, April 9th, and they still haven't got well, back to us. Let's see what she has to say. Yeah, yeah. let's see what she has to say. Was it, where, was it a spiritual uh, contract involved? No. No. This was accidental. She was not supposed to pass away when she did. She's saying that this was, was a freak somebody accident. Else's contract? Was it like the pilot or somebody else in the plane? Or her family? Was there a spiritual contract involved in any of the people involved here? No. Okay. No. She's wow. Does she have a message? talking about the plane having, the plane had trouble. The people, the owners, whoever operated the plane, they were aware of, challenges that the plane was having before it took off and that's what she wants mm. mom to be aware of there's a reason why you haven't gotten all of the reports uh, there's information that you're going to find out she's showing documents there's something that is either hidden or unknown um, there was a prepare before the plane actually crashed there was some form of preparing for her there's going to be information that you're going to find she's telling you to look into it um, How? Where did she go? Also telling Where me that she. Um, well, I get. I think I'm waiting on the report from the NB. I don't really know how to say oh, it. Oh, you know okay, the, the yeah, plain yeah. national. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, NSTB or something. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. So we're waiting still on that. Yes. And um, at first they said it was a weight issue, but then I've talked. You know, I've had another mom I've gotten really close to that lost her only daughter. Um, I'm a mother. I have five children. Mariah was my first. Mm. And um, so I've gotten really close with this other mother, and she's done a lot of investigating. She, we actually have both yeah. gone to the site in Arizona and visited the golf course where they crashed. And um, she talked to the police, and the police said that they didn't think it was a weight issue because they didn't reload the fuel. Um, you know, everybody on there was little, you know. <laughs> the girls were little. Yeah. It, um, mm. was, a six, it so was, was supposed to be just a... Yeah, it looks like it just, it went down on her side. It wasn't very high up when you watch the, the crash. It was just like instantly just it turned to one side and went straight down. Oh, it was a single did engine. Did an engine? Oh, oh I don't know. Engine. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah, it could have because um, one of the people that heard it that, um, that was in a condominium on the golf course, he was like 25. I wish I could shake this guy's hand because um, at 25, he ran out there and was the first one on the scene and saw my daughter was the only one that got thrown from the plane. Uh, The other victims were um, actually inside the plane still and got burned. Mm -hmm. And she's the only one that was actually physically like a, you know, on the, by the plane to see her and thought she might still be alive. But in some states that makes me feel comfortable because I know that she died instantly. Um, Oh, you know, and so, Oh, I'm gonna have yeah, my uh, husband. She's celebrating I'm gonna have with him you. look over there. Okay, go ahead quickly now. She's celebrating something with you. I don't know if this is a birthday. She's acknowledging a celebration. Uh huh. She just had well, her birthday. Is there something in coming August. up? No, no well, not. There's something her that's coming up. Is coming up. April 9th. No, so that's coming up. So she doesn't it's think not that her birthday. What is it, um, Mariah? Maybe a sibling's birthday or a family member's birthday. Yes, She's there's a be lot of birthdays something. coming up. All her brother's birthdays are coming up. They're all in one month. And, oh, um, there you go. You know, That's probably what and, she's and trying to I, One thing I want to say, when you lose a sibling and a daughter or a son, the whole family mm. gets affected by it. And it oh, just, God, yes. It changes your God, life. Yeah. I mean, you know. I will never it say that it, everything's not perfect because everything is perfect in this moment, you know, that I'm in right now. Because, yeah. yeah. You know, it is. I know. Um, you never I know. know what you can and happen I, the next you day. You and I know, girl. Stacy, you and yeah. I know. All right, so yeah. um, I'm going to have to close the show before we run into the other. Yeah, uh, thank pe- you. Uh, pe- 
But thank you, Stacy. You're welcome. And you guys get in touch with you, Kevin James. Oh, KevinJamesBriggs.com. Thank you, Kevin. And, of course, our wonderful Raylene at Angel Medium numeral seven dot com. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Thank Lisa. You. Bye. 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 Bye.